So if you're not using your spine as the leg wave and just thinking about a leg wave as a literal leg wave, then they might look a lot like this. But if you want to think about a really fluid leg wave, then you have to think of your leg as an extension of your spinal wave. Welcome back to another tutorial. This week we will be working on body waves or spinal waves and leg waves. I'm Mimi Midnight and I help pole dancers find their sensual truth. Now before we get started, make sure you stretch out your back and also your hip flexors. Once you've done that, come join me back here and we will get going. So the key to body waves is really control and awareness of your spine. So this first exercise is really going to start building that. Stand with your back against the pole, with your feet a little bit farther away so you can kind of get this lean into your back and you can put pressure into the pole. So the first thing you want to do is think about pressing just your tailbone into the pole. Actively push that vertebra into the pole, then move it up into the next and pull your tailbone away. So only one vertebra is touching the pole at a time. And continue up your back all the way, just thinking one vertebra at a time, pushing that into the pole. Not too much, just enough so you can feel it. You don't want to hurt yourself and then going back down. You can also do this against a wall. And up. Starting off really nice and slow and trying to notice where it feels a little bit more difficult for you where you're not really like bringing control and awareness to that vertebra and then sit there a little. Once you get that, then you want to think about moving away from the pole and then still imagining the pole behind you, your spine pushing into that pole, going down your back one vertebra at a time. Never forget the tailbone. What I see the most is people coming into their roll and stopping it short at their hips and not finishing it. So spinal waves, body rolls, whatever you want to call them, they can be done in multiple directions in infinite number of ways, not just forward and in reverse like we're doing here. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out the Sexy Movement Essentials pack, which is found here. Okay, on to the next part leg waves for leg hip fluidity all those things let's first put on a pair of socks all right now that we got our socks on let's talk about how we can make our leg wave as juicy and fluid as possible and the way you can do that is making sure that the leg is an extension of your body wave let's get into that standing next to your pole we're going to place one leg grounded in the floor and the other leg is going to be a noodle Whichever leg, it doesn't matter, but it's going to be a noodle. You don't move it. You don't control it. It's just there. Let's go into our body wave. And as we wave, let the leg be a follow through of that wave. So again, I'm not controlling the leg at all. I'm just doing my body wave and letting the leg be a follow through of that body wave. Now, if your leg is not moving at all and you're waving, then chances are you're probably not pushing your wave through your hips. So we talked about this before. Don't forget the tailbone. If you're waving only up to here, your leg's not going to move. If you wave and go all the way through the hip and let that follow through your leg, then your leg will move. Same going forward. I'm pushing my hips all the way forward dragging it back. 
Another way you can think about this is if you had a broom, your toe was the bottom of the broom, the bristles, and then the top of your broom where you're holding it, that's your hip. So I'm thinking if I want to sweep, I've got to use, grab my hip, sweep that floor. So grab that broom, sweep the floor. And you'll notice that you're creating this wave with your body that follows through in your leg. The key here is feeling that energy go from each vertebra all the way down through to the toes. So I'm paying attention to that push in each vertebra that goes down to the toes. So I'm still imagining that pole behind my back and I'm still imagining pushing each vertebra into that pole all the way to my tailbone. And the more I can think about pushing into that pole, the more the leg can kind of move. All right, step two, making this leg wave big and small. So now we're gonna pay attention to the push and pull of the pole. So we got our body waves and our leg waves that are standing, but when you have a pole, you can make the wave so much more interesting because now you can use it to assist in your waves. So I can pull myself in and push myself away. And that allows me to make this wave so much bigger than if I was freestanding. Just a little tip, slow everything you're doing down like half the speed, a quarter of the speed of whatever you're doing right now, even if you're already going slow. This will really allow you to feel the movement through your body rather than get in your head and start thinking about all the steps we're talking about. So have this movement be a whole experience, not these step-by-step -step things that you have to remember and think about. Okay, well we gotta pause because we need to have a shameless newsletter plug somewhere in this video. If you wanna get pole dancing tips straight to your inbox, and hear my once in a while rants that you will love to, <laughs> that you'll actually like reading, check out my newsletter here. All right, on to step three. We're opening and closing our hips to further the fluidity of our leg wave. So just to start, stand away from your pole, feet planted, facing forward. We're just gonna work on diving to one side. Diving to one side. Diving to one side. And what you'll notice is that when you have a starting position, your hips are forward, when I dive to the side, my hips then close. Dive, feeling the hips close. Don't worry too much about the feet. The feet are just there to help support your upper body, or sorry, support your whole body. Now this time when we dive to the side, I'm going to think about tucking my hips in that close, and then pushing my hips back through my belly button to the starting position. So diving to the side, tucking my hips closed, and then pushing belly button first, hips back to the starting position. If this is really difficult at first, go back to the beginning, we're just diving to the side. Diving to the side. And once you get that, then you can start to add the tuck and come back. Dive to the side, add the tuck, and come back. Eventually, you'll start be able to do the tuck and then the pushback. When you're doing the pushback, think about if the pole was still behind your back. We're still pushing that vertebra into the pole to come back. Now to do your leg wave with the pole, open and closing our hips. So we're starting same position, facing forward and diving into the pole, twisting that hip closed, tucking the hip, and then pushing the hip back. Diving into the pole, closing the hip, tucking, and pushing the hip 
Now you notice leg is still a noodle. It is always a noodle. I'm never doing anything with my leg. It is just existing as the follow through of my spinal wave. The less attention I pay to my leg, the more fluid my leg wave is gonna look. The more attention I bring into my spine and the sensations within my spine, the more fluid my leg wave will look, which is totally counterintuitive, but trust me, just try it. Now, once again, remember to slow this down. Whatever speed you're already going at, cut that in half. For some of you, it might have to be a quarter. The slower you can do it, the more awareness you can bring into what you're actually doing, the more the body can learn versus the brain. All right, on to the last step, step four, which is reverse body waves. So we're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna reverse it, so bottom up. Now you might be thinking, does bottom mean the toes? No, because once again, we never pay attention to leg. Bottom is your hip. So I'm going to start from the open and close of the hip. I'm going to, so let's start from square one, just getting that reverse body wave in. So I'm still thinking about the pole behind my back, except this time I'm starting with my tailbone on the pole instead of my base of neck, head, whatever. So we're thinking tailbone on the pole, rolling each vertebra all the way up, tailbone back on the pole, rolling all the way up. Now let's add the leg. So if I tuck my hips forward, the noodle comes in, rolling it up, the hips come back, noodle comes back, tuck, back, tuck. So one thing you might notice is that the slower you go, the more movement you'll actually get in your leg. There is this lag time that happens where the leg has to follow through before it can go the other way. And if you don't slow down, you'll often cut off that follow through and then push into the other direction already. So we wanna let that follow through happen. Take your time, take your time, take your time. And then let it go the other way. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Now, if we wanna do the open and close of this hip, we can think starting in the open position, tucking forward towards the pole, closing and then opening, closing, as you get better at these leg waves you can start adding your own central truth to them. more tutorials like this make sure you check out this one next and as always make sure you snag your free sexy movement lesson here and thank you so much for joining me today I will see you all next week